In this week's video, I take you to the city of Zhirardov. This is a not very old city and not very big either. It's very uh, close to Warsaw and it is actually a bit unique here because it was built around basically a linen factory, uh, well, I should say factory complex in the kind of 1830s. And it's one of the few places in Poland that wasn't heavily damaged during the war. So you're seeing a lot of kind of 19th century architecture. So I hope you find this place as interesting as I did. It certainly is a nice place to explore and makes a pretty decent day out. So I'll go through the history and enjoy. Dzień dobry and welcome to A Brit in Poland. This channel is going to bring you everything you need to know about Poland. I am exploring the country, bringing you the history, trying to tell you about the culture and show you what it is really like to live here. So feel free to check out my other media, Instagram, Facebook, and I will share links to those in the comments. I also have a website, www.britinpoland.com where I collect my videos for easy to view manner. Also, you are welcome to contribute to my efforts through Patronite or Patreon, and all descriptions are available below the video. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and please come back for more by subscribing, liking, or commenting. Thank you very much. Dosa Pachenia. So a big thank you to my Patreon and Patronite patrons. You really help me to keep this channel going. Much appreciated. So, as I said, Zhirardov is very, very close to Warsaw. In fact, it was only about a 45 minute train journey and one of the local regional trains at that. So it was pretty cheap to get to, I think about 14, 15 Zlossi. And yeah, what can I say? Uh, so we start off at a train station and it's nice because it's a train station which isn't under construction. And I find a lot of the train stations <laughs> in Warsaw tend to be. And so let's, while I'm kind of showing you a bit of the route we took, because we, of course, did a nice little walking tour. You have your classic statue of uh, Josef Pusudski. But let me tell you a bit about the history before we get to some of the main sites. So... The city was actually established in 1833 and it originated during t due to a linen factory uh, which was actually transferred from the Marymont uh, district of Warsaw uh, to the village of Ruda Guzhovska and the estate of Count uh, Lubienski. And a mechanical flax spinning mill was organized by Philippe de Girard. And there were some funds courtesy of the uh, the government of Warsaw and it was quite easily funded as the company included the vice president of the Polish bank Josef uh, Lubowicki and the commercial councillor of the bank Karol Schultz so there wasn't really any problem freeing up the funds. The machines used in the complex were actually invented by Philippe de Girard and he in fact entered a competition started by Napoleon to create like the best spinning machine, though he didn't win for unknown reasons. To tell you a little bit about the cathedral, uh, so this was actually built in the kind of 1900s, so 1900 to 1903, uh, with the help of uh, Carol Dietrich Jr. Um, it's a twin church of the Warsaw Praga Cathedral of St. Michael and Florian, and also the Cathedral of Białystok. And of course it has the big statue of Pope John Paul II out the front, like you see so often in Poland. And this is the uh, the big open square, which looks a bit different uh, to most in Poland. You don't have just like the big brick square. They've made it nice and green. And it's a, you know, a very tranquil, lovely part of the city. Um, but to continue with the history, in 1845, the railway was run through Zhirardov, allowing ample transportation of goods. And 
1857, the plant is purchased by Carol Healer and Carol Dietrich. And Charles Dietrich, um, basically the son of Carol, uh, would take on ownership. And at the time, he was one of the richest men in the world, being a large industrialist. He would develop the city, including building a public library and patronizing the local artists. So he gave a lot of the wealth that he made back in to developing the city and making it a good place for the workers. Oh, here's a statue of Philippe de Girard in case you were curious who he was. Um, so in 1833, there was a strike of the workers in which free people died in clashes with the army and numerous other strikes would take place and the town would earn the nickname Red. This building, is called the Resursa Club and it was established in the 1870s in the British style and a lot of people would party here, uh, especially the elite I imagine. And we went there for lunch, so it has a nice little underground section, but of course we were in the summer, so we were sat outside. I had this pizza, um, which is like Milezhne Jez or Meat Hedgehog, which is a joke to, let's say, Polish reality TV. But yes, continuing on. Uh, so during World War I, uh, the Russians would actually destroy some of the most important buildings of the factory when they were fleeing the city to kind of shock and awe the population and also to try and cripple things before they left. And after the war, the employment began to dry up and the factory activities would wind down and several epidemics such as typhus, cholera, scarlet fever, etc. would break out. To take another break from the history, this is an abandoned factory uh, building that we discovered and we got a bit curious about. Here's a, a little bit of urban exploration for you. Um, we could sort of, I don't know if you were supposed to go in here, but we were able to get into here. It's one of those places that will probably be redeveloped into housing or something in the near future, you know, when the money comes. But at the moment, it provides like an interesting place to explore. One of those kind of eerie abandoned sites, which I'm seeing a bit of in Poland this year. I think this is probably the second or third site like this that I've discovered. Um, but yeah, big open spaces, lots of ruination but it did give a very nice view um, through some of the windows of some of the, uh, the different sites. Uh, this is like the Charles Dietrich Park, which we will get to very shortly. And here was a local rock band who were busy practicing and they, they were quite happy for us to, to film. They were waving and stuff. Well, they were being filmed themselves. So I have no idea what their name is, but you never know. They may be big one day. Anyway, so... Um, Yes, so in 1916, the city would actually receive city rights uh, by the German government. So, yeah, as I said, not the oldest of places. And in the interwar period, the factory would be bought by the Polish government and restarted. Though a French consortium purchased this in 1923 and kind of brought ruin to it. Um, and the, the workers were not very happy. So the Polish government bought it again. And just to take another break, we are entering uh, the, the, let's say, the big park. And it's, it was, you know, maybe not the biggest park in Poland, but it was very nice and cute bridges. I imagine there is sometimes water, but we're in a bit of a drought at the moment, which maybe explains why that's kind of run dry. Old trees. And most notably, you have the villa of Charles Dietrich, uh, which was actually built in about 1896. And he didn't really live there much. I think maybe he actually died shortly after its construction. Uh, well, not too long after. Um, and now it is the basically the, the local history museum. Uh, so we went around here and we had a guide who, bless him, said he didn't speak much English, but he wonderfully uh, told us about the history of the city, uh, focusing very much on the industrialists uh, who were behind it. So he really gave us an incredible insight into how this city got started and 
Yeah, it was very interesting, actually. Here's a, a cool map talking about the industrial sites of Poland. And this is the, uh, like the tomb of Charles Dietrich, which unfortunately is closed for renovation, so not open to the public. And there was uh, a gallery upstairs devoted to uh, a local artist. But yes, continuing the history. Um, so during uh, World War II, September 12th, in fact, the German troops would enter the city and would destroy the railway line. And the city itself was used as like a transit camp for Polish prisoners of war. And Jews would later be transported to the Warsaw Ghetto. An underground would act in defiance of the Germans and perform sabotage operations, though many of those were arrested and killed. Now, this is the second uh, museum, not affiliated with the first, apparently. Uh, but here you get to see some of the historical machinery that was used in linen production. So if you are interested in linen production, you will learn everything you could possibly need to know. But also, the museum was pretty cool. It was very kind of interactive in a way. You could walk, you can touch stuff. You had these great little exhibits that were, you know, very beautiful, great for selfies and uh, Instagram reality stuff. And there was a nice little zoo out the back. And you could, you know, pet the camels. I got very friendly with some of these camels. And there were some nice goats and things as well. So I do, I really recommend uh, both the museums, um, depending on whether you prefer history or you prefer something a bit more live. Uh, they both offer you something worthy of note. And yes, yeah, so after World War II, the oh, sorry, this is a, an old fire station um, built in 1884, again, sponsored by Dietrich and still standing today. And here are some interesting views of uh, some of the uh, the architecture you can see. Um, so yes, after the war, the linen, linen industry was once again expanded. And actually, there are currently efforts um, to place this city on the UNESCO, UNESCO World Heritage Site list. So even though this was quite a small place, it was definitely a place that I'm glad I got to see. Um, I can't remember the name of the district, but there is reminiscent of this district outside of Katowice, which is also another kind of industrial workers um, area. And this last portion of the video, we took a little bit of a trek uh, because after all of the, let's say, the history and the culture uh, that we took in, we wanted to enjoy ourselves. So we took a nice little stroll past several lovely ponds, lovely horses, and we were actually heading out to the beach area because there is a kind of a beach by a lake and uh, you can like rent boats or paddle boats uh, you can sit on the sand I mean I don't know if you were supposed to but we took a few beers and we we're enjoying a nice drink on the uh, on the beach and it was just a you know a lovely scenic area and it's always nice to discover these let's say um, bonus spots when you go to these places but overall, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a bit of a shorter one from me, um, because to be honest, like this place, it's nice. You can easily spend a day there, but you wouldn't say, other than the two museums and a few nice spots to see, that there was really a lot to do, being completely honest. But as I said, really wonderful architecture. You know, if you really want to see like a snapshot of uh, you know pre-war Poland, then come here. Otherwise, Dozovacenia. See you soon on future videos. Thank you for watching.